Well, Don Lemon just backed himself into a corner on live television, trying to pin reparations for slavery on Britain in an interview with a royal commentator. And then you have the, those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism, and they're wondering, you know, $100 billion, $24 billion here and there, $500 million there. Some people want to be paid back, and, uh, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are, you know, you have all of this vast wealth? Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. And when across the entire world, when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say, who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages? Absolutely. That's where they should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Absolutely epic. Uh, that went viral, Raymond. My favorite point is the interesting Hillary. We'll continue this discussion. Somehow I doubt Hillary Ford, which is going to be a Don Lemon regular. <laughs> what an interesting yeah. discussion that is. Look, he didn't expect that uh, truth bomb to drop on yeah. him that, at that moment. The truth is history is complex, and the yes. people involved in the grave sin of of, of both racism and slavery, enslavement of people, that's going on today, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. all over the world, in places like China, in parts of, of Northern Korea, and, and places scattered elsewhere. We need to hear more about that, the contemporary examples of it, and not keep rooting through the annals of history and trying to dig up reparations for people in the present day. I mean, you know, I often say my people were, were making paella and crushing grapes when this happened. We weren't here. So they were, we were more enslaved than, than, you know, we weren't part of this. But when you look at what happened, it's always a broken history. But there good points to it and bad points. And you've got, to, you've got to take the whole of history and move on. We've progressed. And now we're surrounded by our brothers and sisters, and we're all one community. That's what we should have been. But we found that. Celebrate that. Let's move on together. Yeah, history is complicated, Cheryl. It's not as simple as, you know, reparations, let's go, let's move on. Um, you know, you have Henry Louis Gates Jr., a scholar in the New York Times, writing, while we are all familiar with the role played by the United States and the European colonial powers like Britain, France, Holland, Portugal, and Spain, there's very little discussion of the role Africans themselves played. And that role, it turns out, was a considerable one, especially for the slave trading kingdoms of Western and Central Africa, yeah. echoed yeah. by a piece in the Wall Street Journal, University of Baltimore Law. My point is, it's a nuanced, complex issue. Yeah, well, and her point point was correct and that it was the African lords that actually enslaved those people back in history. You cannot change history, but they're trying to. By the way, CNN, Christian Amanpour, the day that the queen died, I mean, really within like an hour of her death oh, yeah. being announced. Did you hear her? I did. Like, she wanted to talk about reparations yep. in that moment. So disrespectful. So obviously someone at that network is pushing that narrative. I think Don Lemon picked up on it. I think he got caught off guard because he realized, oh, oops, she's factually correct. She is right. And by the way, the British abolished slavery way before the United States did, way before other countries. And 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery, Emily. That's right. When I love the internet is in moments like this where the reactions are just like just as delicious as the original Genesis moment. Um, and I love the word wrecked spelled R-E-K-D, which was all over R-E-K-D, whatever it is, <laughs> which is all over after this um, interaction. And to that point, I thought CPAC chair Matt Schlapp had, had sort of an amusing uh, two cents thrown in, where he said, yeah, well, how about reparations to those who fought alongside former slaves to abolish American slavery? According to Lemon's logic, Democrats would need to pay reparations to Republicans. Kind of like it.
I like it too. <laughs> Natalie, I also like this from Tucker Carlson. A fact tsunami just crested over Don Lemon and he's desperately trying to get out. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to be the deer in headlights in the dictionary. Uh, you know, you can't cherry pick history. I know it's an inconvenient truth, like you mentioned. And also, when you really dig into something like this, reparations in the form of free money don't fix inequality. It's something that has to be addressed. But we need to invest in infrastructure, in education, in jobs. And free money is not just going to fix these problems. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.